All right, what's up, everybody? This is AZD. This is my video blog today on the 8th of September, 2021. It's also the last day of Base One. It's been incredible. It's been an ex incredible experience. We're going to do it again in about um, 15 days or so. Okay, Base One, um, base, base One XL <laughs> starting. All right, this is for adults only. I'm speaking to my tribe, Worldwide INC Nation, the INC Nation Warrior Fighting Monks, the INC Nation Beasts, the INC Nation Tribal Leaders and the Tribal Council. This is the book. It's for adults only, and you're responsible for your own condition. And I'm talking to my own people. They understand me. You're just getting to uh, listen in, okay? Here we go. Oh, man, this is good. This is really good. Here we go. Life is posing a... Life is posing you a question. Together is powerful. A deep, burning question in your heart. Do not evade it. Evade means run away from it. Don't run from it, exactly. Life has posed a unique challenge for you. Answer it. Don't evade it. Answer it. Answer it for your own sake. And for the sake of all the rest of us. And I will answer it also. And I will not evade it. And I will not run from it either. I will, as my sincere obligation to myself and to you, answer life's call. Yeah. I'm going to stop right there. There's another one that was really good, but I'm just going to move forward enough for a minute, okay? Man, what am I talking about? But it hits deep. If you have... Oh man, that hits deep. Life is posing a question. What is that question? It's the question is the problems of your life. You've been given a certain set of circumstances that are so unique that no other person ever in the history, future, past, present will ever be in your condition. Never, ever. You have the most unique perspective of any being ever, just so you know. Unique, meaning it's, it's to you to nobody else, it's unique. You, from what you have experienced, have gathered certain data and information on how to handle the challenges that life has given you. Got it? And if you've handled those challenges well, and you've done well in your life, then you need to pass that information, which is wisdom in that case, the knowledge, on to the rest of us and the rest of the world and the, and the generations before after us. Why? Because that's just how life works, okay? Someone should tell you that. Plus, you're going to want to do it when you discover something. It's just, it flows out of you, okay? But the answers to your life is what you're seeking, not the answers to my life. What you're watching in my life is a man who has solved, continues to solve his the challenges that God or the universe gives me, Right? So it's not like I started off by wanting to be in multiple relationships. It's not like I even had that in my mind. It's not like I wanted to be tattooed like this. This was not what was in the plans anywhere in my head. Okay. However, the questions that life posed for me, I began to answer it. And I answered it and I answered the call and I answered the call and I did well. You know, it's not, I did very, very well. That's why I teach. And still to this day, I'm here to answer life's questions that are posed to me every single day. Today, you're faced with some challenges, right? We all are. Those challenges are actually your workbook. That's it. What kind of workbook? That's your spiritual workbook. Spiritual work, by the way, IMC Nation is spiritual work. End of story, okay? We, we, are, we are the most spiritual people you could ever come across. All right? It just doesn't look like what, what they taught you. Just like everything else, they miseducated you. Spiritual people are not people who sit there and do nothing all fucking day, all day doing nothing. That is not spiritual. That's called apathy. That's called not, not being able to do anything about life and allowing bad circumstances to continue. That's against God. That's not right. Okay? Spiritual people have power. They change the world. Even... If they weren't violent, maybe in the case of Jesus Christ or some of these other prophets, they definitely were not little nine volt batteries. They were like fucking galaxies moving through the universe, right? 
So spiritual, real spirituality consists of a lot of power, a lot of intensity. It's not weak. It's not barely alive. It can burn down anything. Nothing can stand in its way. That's why it's so dangerous. Why do you think the communist regime of China went to kidnap the next Dalai Lama? We don't even know if this Dalai Lama is the real one. I don't think it's the real one, to be honest. But I, there's no way I can prove it. But if you watch the history of it, they went to go kidnap this little boy. Why would you want to kidnap the Dalai Lama? A little boy. Why do you give a fuck these fucking soft Buddhists? What the fuck they're doing? What are you afraid of? Okay. This is a spiritual practice, but the spiritual practice is not done outside of your life. Your life becomes the spiritual practice in INT Nation. I'm involved in prayer and spiritual practice all day, all day, 24 hours a day. This is why I improve, because you're watching a man involved in the deepest aspects of soul searching, trying to find the answers to my life. See, if something doesn't make sense to me, like let's say something happens between me and any relationship, okay? I try to make sense out of it by asking questions and finding out where I fucked up, finding out where my values were, were, were messed up, finding out if the communication, I, I have to go figure it out. I can't just let it be because if I let it be, then what I'm saying is, and what I'm allowing is my universe to just be, you know, in that, whatever that condition is. I don't, I don't even know what it is. So I seek answers. And the person who seeks answers, that's a dangerous human being. Those are the people that they don't want around. Because if you're cheating, I'm going to find out. If you're lying, I'm going to find out. Why? Because I'm going to ask fucking questions until I find out. So people who are dishonest, people who are disloyal, they don't want me around. They don't want anybody like me around. Or you. Other than that, it's all good. Why? Because things have to make sense. You see, we were all given a faculty by God called logic, intelligence. Being able to think logically is what makes us different than animals. One of the things, again, communication. So we're given this, in, this intelligence to analyze things, right? Music can't analyze itself. Music can't hear itself, okay? The sunset can't see itself. It's only the eyes of the human that appreciate the sunset. You don't see animals going over there writing poems about the sunset. You don't see animals looking at the clouds. You don't see animals chipping on fucking stars. You don't see them planting trees. You don't see them writing poems. You don't see them painting. You know what I mean? That faculty is the faculty of the gods. That's what we were given. The ability to look at these energies and start to make judgments out of it, make sense out of it, create with it, Change it. That's our job. That's what we do. Okay? So, we, if we take pride in this, then our life all day... See, you, maybe you got lost in your job. You got lost in your stupid identity. You got lost in something in your life, right? But I never got lost in that. It's always been the same thing. Hey, why am I here? What the hell is going on? What am I supposed to do? And how can I live the best possible day today? Right Today, how can I just really milk this motherfucker to the end of it? Because I could die tonight. I could die tomorrow. Then we don't know what happens to me. I'm aware that I'm here right now. Right? And you're, you should be aware as you're watching this or listening that you're here right now. We don't know where here is going to be in the future. You understand that? So you make a practice out of wherever here is, whatever that is you're aware of, that you become the dopest version of you in that in that in that reality. Hasn't it been frustrating if you've ever had a dream where in your dream you can't act like yourself? Like you're just like, why am I acting like that? Right? Yeah. But wouldn't it be cool if in your dream you continue to keep your presence and your like, you, uh, look, I could have any goddamn dream I want as long as I could be myself. Because I could handle life. Now there's good dreams and bad dreams, good things happen, bad things happen. But I know I can handle life. And that's what you have to get to. You just can't get to the point where you ever think, oh, the, you, you just can't get to the point where you think, I can't handle it. You have to handle it. You have to. What if you can't? What do you mean? You will. You will or you'll die in the process. But let it kill you. Don't kill yourself. Let it destroy you. And you'll be surprised that you won't be destroyed. You'll be surprised how much you could outlast in the end. 
You'll be surprised how much fear is the thing killing you 99% of the time. I don't deal with fear like that because I know the disease of it. The fear is what kills. And to kill fear, you need action. How does one kill fear? By acting. If you're standing and you want to jump for skydiving or bungee jumping and you got that fear, how do you kill the fear? You jump. When you jump, it's not, you can't be afraid anymore for jumping. You're now dealing with shit. When we would do martial arts, and well, I'm still doing it, but not really at this level, but there was a fear of the opponent for me. I don't care what anybody else said. Maybe some people weren't afraid. I was afraid of the opponent. The opponent was skilled. He was like me. Why would, why would I be afraid of a motherfucker who could do what I can do? That's the weirdest shit to me. It's like, why is that lion afraid of the other lion? Because that other fucking lion has teeth and claws just like him and he knows what the fuck he can do. I respect another man who knows how to fight. So how, would, how do you overcome the fear? You engage. You go into action. And once you're in action, there's no, there's no time for the fear. Because you're solving immediate problems right away. When you sit back and there's no problem to solve, the problem becomes to solve the problem that's going to happen in the future, which is that's where the fear happens. So you get into action. You just do that phone call. You do that. Yeah, a lot of times that's what I do. People wonder, I talk to so many people when I'm out. I just, once, once the feeling enters and I begin to see that there's a fear, there's a fear of communicating, I am not afraid to communicate. That is just the weirdest thing I've ever heard. How can one be scared to communicate? That makes no sense. I mean, unless, yes, if he said something, someone shot you, yes, I get it. But if you're afraid to communicate because somebody may not approve or accept, no, 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 you can't do that. You got to be, you got to be way stronger than that. You have to be okay with the little temporary emotional upsets that happen inside of you just to get your communication across because your communication needs to be heard. Isn't it something important? And you go, oh, it's not that important. Well, okay, if it's not that important, then make sure you know that too in your head. If it's not that important, let it go, okay? But if it's important, communicate about it. It's that simple. Now, Communication is the key that resolves all of this shit. However, whenever you're communicating about something bad, remember, you're communicating about something bad. And when you communicate about something bad, it doesn't feel good when you talk about it. It actually feels bad to talk about it. So you and I could be totally cool, right? We're, we're two friends talking. And then one of us begins to talk about a very bad experience or something they can't stand. As they begin to talk about it, the bad feelings begin to create, be created inside of their system to some degree. You have to. So you see their face, you know, if they're telling the story, their face will turn like, you know, and then they say, I can't believe it. And they'll start to feel it, right? And now you're in dialogue. And if they are having a problem with something you're doing or saying, and you're having a problem with something they're doing or saying, this conversation becomes very, 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 very uncomfortable. It becomes so uncomfortable that it's easier to shut it down. It's easier to attack it. It's easier to say, I don't want to hear it. It's easier to run from it. But I tell you, if you look carefully, you're a coward. And that's something that I'm not. I am not a coward. And every time that I've caught myself acting like a coward, I have immediately stopped. I don't need time to stop acting like the sheep. I just need recognition that my behavior was sheep-like because I'm not a sheep. So the practice here is the practice of being able to communicate, ready, through negative shit. Out, that is not a good feeling. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be comfortable. But it is the only way that you're going to save yourself and others. It's the only way that you're going to save your relationships. You're going to have to get out that negative shit that's sitting inside of you. I'm just telling you, that's just what it is. You don't have to believe me, but then you'll never make it. You're going to have to be able to take that toxic, nasty shit inside of you and somehow bring it out without vomiting on others. That's the difficult part. That's the part that I have been practicing for some time now. 
which is, yes, I feel a lot of negative shit inside of my system because I also grew up in the same society and the same bullshit under the subject to the same laws, right? So I also have that push button response to a lot of shit that happens. Now I'm learning, I need to communicate it when these things happen. I mean, I've always known that. But what I'm learning is the communication of it, there has to be a way and there is to communicate it where as it comes out, well, you know, the vision for me is you're not vomiting, you're not throwing up on others. You're protecting others and not just toxifying them. That's difficult. I don't have it down yet, but I'm getting it down. And But it's a task of everybody who's practicing the art of communication, the art of relationships, and that's all life is really, is people relating to each other and communicating. Let's see. If you're practicing this shit, then that's what you need to do. One, you have to create your own sewage system emotionally. You have to have your own system of getting rid of the toxic material that you accumulate during the day in bad conversation with people. How, what are you going to do with it? You need a friend to talk to? Maybe you can have a friend to talk to. Maybe you could create a group like on Telegram where you guys go and each of you just has five minutes every day and you don't keep the group too big because that, that's how a group becomes precious. Each person contributes. And you go five minutes, so you have 30 minutes, everybody sitting around and a person just saying what it bothers. All these things are valid therapies for life because in everything in life, there's an inhale and exhale. Yin and yang. What, must, what inflows must outflow, said L. Ron Hubbard, and what outflows must inflow. These are laws of communication. It's like the tides, the ocean goes... Tsh Everything in life follows this. So as you go through your day, you're receiving a lot of bad communication. You are. I mean, you're receiving bad communication from the clerk, from the radio, from CNN, from your friends, from your family. Not that people are going around trying to be bad at communicating. It's just that nobody ever taught anybody how to communicate properly. Like nobody ever taught anybody how to talk. You got to get that. We have to discover that as we go. So we've, this, in IMC Nation, we've discovered a lot of the pieces. We're very, come on, how do you think I get people? I get women. You wouldn't even believe what happened this morning. I swear to God, I texted my girlfriend, I said, God is just raining beautiful women on me. This woman is so pretty. I'm like, where the fuck have you been in San Jose? In the last two or three days, I've met two of the prettiest girls I've seen ever. Fuck yeah. And both have just been extended right into this one was just unreal what happened. I came out from the gym today and I was driving to so get something and suddenly I was like, no, I'm just going to go to this fucking weird drive through I've never been. Go around, the girl comes up. I was like, oh my God, you have really good makeup. And she goes, thank you. She goes, oh, I think I recognize you. And I said, oh, you do? And I said, oh my God, what the, who are you? Like, how did you arrive here? And they're really like that. I'm like, who are you? How did you arrive here? She started laughing. And I said, how are you? who are you? And then I just said, you want to go out with me? She's got to learn. And she's paused. I said, would you want to go out? She goes, yeah, I'd go out. I said, yeah. She goes, what do you want to do? I said, whatever the fuck you want to do. You're too pretty for me to give a fuck what to do. Is it going to happen? Yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen for sure. That's my power. That's IMC Nation. That's what we're going to go over in class right now. In an hour and a half from now. It's a brotherhood of the beast. Guess what I'm going to do? You know that little story I told you? I'm going to get into detail about it. Because it's not, it's not just that. It's what's happening internally with me as I'm communicating. That's how I'm acknowledging the little moments. You understand that? And of course, the conversation went a little bit further than that. And that's what I teach. And it's magical. It's magical. Can you imagine? You have a friend, me, who could get the most beautiful woman anywhere, anytime, all the time, every time. And I do it every goddamn weekend. It's not like I even miss once. I'll do it again this week. Okay? You have a friend like that. I'm going to show you how to do it. There's a skill here. Okay? And I'm teaching it to you. You have to clean yourself out. I believe God put the woman there to test the man. I really do. Men love to be tested, dude. We are... We are challenge seekers, we are adventurers, we slay dragons, and anybody who's ever done any sort of competition like martial arts or any anything as a man knows, 
If it's too easy, it's not worth it. You're always seeking that motherfucker who's slightly better to beat him. Like, it's just our nature. It's evolution. It's in our DNA. And the woman is there to entice us because we like her so much when she's pretty. We'll do anything for her. If she's soft and pretty, knows how to treat us, we'll do anything for her. Okay, that's the secret. We're suckers for that. But she's there to judge and not just give herself to any goddamn man. She's there to give herself to the right man, the man who's strong enough to be with her and take care of all her bullshit and beyond. She needs to want to be like this guy. Like she needs to be, she wants to be him. That's the goal, right? All right, you go to arazapar.com, A-R-A-S-H-Z-E-P-A-R.com and register for the Brotherhood of the Beast. It's $97 or $147. Those are the two options, okay? But that's max. And right now there's a, a, a sale, so go over there. Be the best, fuck the rest. I am C-Nation.